If you're looking to score in the 99th percentile on the LSAT, meaning you're aiming to score 173 plus, you've got to prep in a fundamentally different way than the vast majority of other test takers. Most prep courses won't serve you. Googling for random explanations on forums is not going to be the way you want to go either. If you want to get a top score, again, you've got to do something different from what everyone else is doing. I'm going to assume as a given that you already have a basic foundation in the various sections of the LSAT, the different question types, that you've already drilled questions by type, you've worked on your pacing, you've worked on your endurance, but you're looking to reach the next level in your LSAT prep. If you've already done the basics, this video is for you to help you reach that fundamentally next level. If you want to score in the 160s, that simply requires basic proficiency in the typical standard strategies. For example, you're able to take the contrapositive, you're able to diagram conditional statements appropriately, and you are able to, for example, negate answer choices for a necessary assumption question. You've got your diagramming down and your note taking down. To score in the 170s, however, requires something beyond that. It requires not just blindly applying strategies that you've learned from someone else, but rather you have a deep understanding of why the strategies work, meaning you have developed the ability to see the exam from the test maker's point of view, just as Neo in the Matrix is able to see the code underlying the Matrix, just like Agent Smith can. So to that end, I've developed some strategies to help you do just that, to help you see the LSAT from the test maker's point of view. One of the biggest breakthroughs I got in my understanding of the LSAT was when I started writing my own LSAT questions. In fact, I wrote about 10 of my own original logic games. This was not just me taking LSAT written logic games and changing the topics and the variables. I was actually writing my own original logic games from scratch. And it takes a lot of work, it turns out, to write a flawless, perfect logic game. It took me about six hours of focused work for each logic game that I created to make it realistic, to make it difficult, and to make it airtight with no mistakes at all. If you want a sense of how hard this is to do, take a look at all the books of fake LSAT questions there from companies like Barron's or LSAT for Dummies. Their practice questions are full of flaws and mistakes, as you'll see from their reviews on Amazon. In contrast, my games contain no mistakes at all. I published them about 10 years ago now, and no one out of the thousands of people who've completed my own logic games has ever spotted any errors in them, despite me offering a bounty of $1,000 to anyone who could find a mistake in one of my logic games. So as an exercise, why am I telling you this? Because you will learn a lot in the process of writing your own LSAT questions to see what goes into designing those tricks and traps for the unsuspecting, unwary test taker. When you see it from the test maker's point of view, you'll be that much better situated to avoid spotting those mistakes as you work through the questions themselves. Now, a lot of people will recommend doing Sudoku, doing crossword puzzles, maybe with your morning cup of coffee, but my view, there are approximately 400 actual official LSAT logic games released by LSAC. Most of them are in LawHub, which is LSAC's online platform to get all the prep tests. So my question is, if you're taking the LSAT between now and June, and of course June of 2024 is the last time the logic game section will be offered on the LSAT, why would you go beyond those 400 games? If you've got only a couple of months, will you really ever get beyond those 400 games? that LSAC has released as official LSAT practice questions? And could you get a perfect score on all of those logic game sections? If you couldn't, there's still something for you to learn by redoing and reviewing those games in depth. Now, of course, it's not just about logic games. We also have logical reasoning and reading comprehension to look at as well. So I have some advice for you on reaching the next level in those sections also. One of the most valuable exercises that I've created for my students is helping them see how to transform one logical reasoning question type into another, meaning that if we take a logical reasoning stimulus, which of course could be an argument, could be a fact set, can you manipulate the structure of the stimulus and change the question stem to change it from one question type into another? For example, can you reframe a flaw question as a weakened question? Can you change a strengthening question into a weakened question as well? Can you change a necessary assumption question into a flaw question or even a resolve the paradox question or a parallel? It turns out that you can very easily change almost any LSAT question type into another, either by manipulating the stimulus, manipulating the answer choices, or potentially both. And this is valuable for a number of reasons. One is that it helps you see that, of course, it's not always about the question stem type, 
it's also about deeply understanding the stimulus. It can also be useful because let's say that you don't like flaw questions, but you do like weaken questions. If you can just take a flaw question and change it into weaken, you'll make it easier for you to solve. So give that a try. And if you're looking for more on that, I cover this in depth in the LSAT Unplugged prep courses. More information linked below and available at lsatunplugged.com. I have detailed walkthroughs where I do exactly that in my live online classes using the Socratic review method of which this is just one of many techniques that I offer there. Now, if you're struggling with reading comprehension, of course, there are a variety of strategies we can use for you there as well. One exercise I have my students do is I have them rewrite an entire reading comprehension passage in simpler language to dumb it down. For example, how could you explain this passage text to a five-year-old? Because of course, LSAC is taking real world texts and adapting them for use on the LSAT by making them more boring. They are boringifying it for you. They're making it more boring because they wanted to make it more difficult for you to stay engaged when you have such limited time. If your eyes are moving down the text, but you're not processing what you're reading, of course, you're going to have to go back over it again and again, wasting valuable time. They're aiming to get you mired in the details when, of course, the structure is what really matters. So I'd recommend as an exercise, rewrite it in simpler language, and then, of course, extract just the main idea. Focus only on that. If you're struggling with understanding what is the main idea, what is the primary purpose, what is the author's central opinion of the passage, you might, as an exercise, do dozens of passages where you just read the text and solve only the general global main idea type questions, which include main idea, primary purpose, author's tone, a best title for the passage, passage organization, Leave aside all the detail-oriented questions. You can always solve those later. But if you don't know the main idea, then of course, you don't really know anything at all. So I recommend slowing it down as a drill. Just read the passages and just solve the main idea questions only. If you're worried about burning through valuable practice material, remember that there are nearly 100 released LSAT practice tests. And so you could use the first 30 of them for this exercise only, and you'll still have roughly 70 additional tests you can do in full as individual sections or as, of course, full-length timed exams. Anyway, folks, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please do me a favor and share it with someone who needs to see it. And if you'd like my help in reaching the 170s and implementing strategies like this, there are a variety of ways I could support you. And I'm looking for a couple of students aiming to score 170 plus on the LSAT in the next three to six months. If this describes you, you can check out the links below to book a call with me and my team. We'd be glad to help you out. And in the meantime, I'll wish you all the best and take care.